Okay, let's have a look. I, I'd like to, I, I've got the test set for Wednesday. We'll see, we'll see. Uh, it's possible, I know this week's a little crazy. Might be <coughs> Thursday, might, we might have had a little bit. So we'll just, we'll see. But what I, here's kind of what my thoughts were on this. I thought we would, I want to go through at least one question today. And then you can tell me what you want me to do after that. If you want to, I mean, if you want to, and we can take questions tomorrow, that's fine. Uh, but I want to go through one. There's one of these, one, one we need to do. Um, okay, so what about something like this? Okay, so... We, we want to go back to we want to go back to our discussion last week. This is a rational function, right? Yeah. And so if we're taking we're take we're saying, when we're trying to find n behavior, we're just taking limits at infinity, right? Everybody's made that connection, right? Mm -hmm. So we're taking limits. We want to know what the right asymptote looks like. We're going to take a limit as x approaches positive infinity. The left asymptote will take a limit as x approaches negative infinity. Now for rational functions. Remember that it's convenient that they always share asymptotes, which is great. You get one asymptote shared between both ends of the function. Both end behaviors are going to be on the same asymptote. If we had, real quickly, if I had same degree polynomials top and bottom, what's the equation of the asymptote? Leading coefficients, right. It would just be, we'd have, our limit would be, the limit of the function at positive or negative infinity would just be, the ratio of the leading coefficients. And so we would just get a horizontal asymptote. So y equals that number, right? If the bottom is a higher degree than the top, if the bottom is a higher degree than the top, zero, y equals zero. And if the top is higher degree than the bottom, then there is no limit, right? But in the event that the top is one degree higher than the bottom, we know that when we divide this out, this day, I, we did this clear back in Honors Algebra 2. We talked about this stuff, kind of in preparation for this moment. Uh, we know that if we divide this out, we are going to get a line plus potentially some leftover, right? Plus some, some constant divided by the denominator, right? And that's what gives us our slant asymptote. So let's, let's go through that process. So we've got to, in order to find out what the slant asymptote is, we have to divide this out. So how do we do that? It's been a while, but we got, yeah, we got to do division, right? In this case, we can always use long division. In some cases, it's convenient to use uh, synthetic division, but in some cases, it's, it's not so much. I'm going to show you how to do this with long division because it always works. Synthetic division would be easy if the bottom were something in the form x plus or minus a number, right? We can make this work synthetically, and I'll show you how. But you can take your pick if you really want to use synthetic on this or not. So if we divide this thing out, remember the, the denominator is what goes out in front of the division symbol. I don't remember what all that goofy stuff is even called. But we just get a 3x minus 2 out front. Inside, what must we do? Good. We, ha we have to preserve a column for every power of x when we do long division. And that's really important. It's a very common mistake. So we'd end up with 9x squared plus 0x minus 3. There we left our columns. And then, now what? Perfect. So we want, how many times does the leading term outside divide into the leading term inside? 3x. Good. So the first term of our answer is 3x. Right, so we're going to uh, multiply through, uh, what do we get, minus 6x. Okay, but, yeah, okay, but we don't want to do that. This is, I got real particular about this, because it's easy to avoid mistakes if you do this systematically. So what I would always urge you to do is then when, when we're going to subtract vertically, because with long division, we subtract vertically. With synthetic division, we add, right? So when we subtract, put the negative out front, put this in a quantity, and then always just subtract. This is kind of what your pencil is always going to do on the paper. It's always going to go top turn, minus, bottom turn, term. So those cancel, of course. 
0 minus negative 6x is 6x. Negative 3 minus 0, that just comes straight down, right? Okay, and then we're on to the next, next term on our answer. So 3x divides into 6x how many times? 2. Okay, so we get a plus 2. We'll distribute the 2. Gives us 6x minus 4. And I'm going to subtract the whole thing. 6x minus 6x cancels. Negative 3 minus negative 4 is 1. So we end up with positive 1 is our remainder, right? And so this is actually equal to, and if we write this out, if we actually go through the process of simplifying this quotient, we get 3x plus 2 plus 1 is what remains over the denominator. So now we've, we've simplified the quotient. If I were to take the limit now, I've got my f of x. So the limit of all this stuff as x goes to plus or minus infinity, what's going to happen? Then the limit. So the fraction goes to zero, and everything else just stays there. Yeah, this first term goes infinite, but we're interested in how it goes infinite, right? And this is how. So the function, the, the limit of this function just becomes the limit of the function 3x plus 2, because that term is going to go away, right? And so that's the equation of our slant asymptote. So in this case, we'd have y equals 3x plus 2 would be our answer. Let's just look at this on Desmos. You do, right. In the limit, the end behavior, that term, that term goes away. Right? The limit of that final term is just 0. So all you're left with, and we'll see this on Desmos, So we've got, oh, come on. So we've got the function nine x squared minus three divided by three x minus two. So there it is in red. And then let's graph our answer that we got, which was, you guys remember what that was? 3x plus 2. 3x plus 2. Oops. OK, so if we look at both of these, yeah, you can see that you know you don't have to go out very far before you start to realize that our asymptote, that green line, it matches the function, doesn't it? When you get far out on the tails. Okay. Locally, it doesn't match it well at all. Locally, right? There's all kinds of weird stuff going on in here. But once you get far away, it, it, it sticks to that asymptote. Okay. Make sense? Okay, do you want to hold off on questions on the second part of the last assignment until tomorrow? Yeah. Okay, that's fine. <laughs>